Well, hello, I'm glad you could make it today. I'm Ken Nesbitt, and today we are going to be talking about a kind of poem called a diamante. And so I'm gonna tell you what a diamante is. I'm gonna tell you who invented it, what the rules are for writing diamantes and how you can write your own. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so to begin with, let's talk about what a diamante is. Now, a diamante is a form of poetry, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that a form is the term that poets use to mean a kind of poem, a style of poem, uh, a type of poem, right? We call that a form. So a diamante is a form of poetry. It's a very short kind of poem that only has four lines. The do not have to rhyme, and so we call that an unrhymed seven line poem. But you can't just write seven lines any old way you like. There are some rules, and I will be going over those in just a moment. Now, the diamante, uh, when you write your seven lines, because of the way the words are laid out, they wind up being a sort of a diamond shape, right? They're, they're small at the top, big in the middle, and small again at the end. And now this form, the diamante, was invented in 1969. So what is that now? About, uh, about 50 years ago by this woman right here. Her name is Iris Teat. And she was an American poet who decided she wanted to create a poetic form, especially for kids. That would be really easy for kids to learn how to write. Um, the, uh, because of the diamond shape, she decided to call it a diamond poem, but just to make it a little bit fancier, she called it a diamante because that is the Italian word for diamond. And, um, the, oh, I should mention there are two different kinds of diamantes. There are what we call synonym diamantes and antonym diamantes. And I will explain that in just a moment here. Okay. So remember. I said that diamantes are short at the beginning and short at the end and kind of long in the middle. And the reason is because your first line only has one word on it and your last line only has one word on it. But then each subsequent line, it goes one, two, three, four, three, two, one. And that's the number of words on each line. So if you laid the words out, uh, they would look something like this, right? They would give you a nice little diamond shape. Now, there's a little bit more to it than that because you put different kinds of words on each line. So on the first line and the last line, you use a noun. And a noun you probably know means a person, a place, or a thing. So most commonly, diamantes are written about things. So we start with a noun at the beginning, and then our second line, is two adjectives. So we have one noun, then two adjectives. Now, an adjective is a word that describes the noun in the first line. Make sense? So we'll have two adjectives. Then on the third line, we're going to have three verbs. And verbs are your action words. And again, those action words will refer back to the noun of the first line. So you'll say what that thing does. Make sense? Then the fourth line, we have four more nouns, and then we go back down to three verbs, two adjectives, and another noun. Now, you'll um, remember the noun is a person, place, or thing. The adjective is a descriptive word, uh, a word like purple or heavy or uh, fa fast or something like that, okay? Uh, your verbs are action words like run, jump, walk, fly. <laughs> And now here's where we get to the two different types of diamantes. There are synonym diamantes and there are antonym diamantes. Now, synonyms are words that mean exactly the same thing. So a synonym diamante um, begins and ends with nouns that mean the same thing. An antonym is words that mean the opposite things. So an antonym diamante will start with one noun, but it will end with a noun that is the opposite of the one that it started with. So 
Uh, oh, and by the way, I think it's kind of funny that antonym is the antonym of synonym. Ah. Okay, so here's an example of what a synonym diamante would look like. And remember, the first line and the last line are going to be synonyms of each other, meaning they're words that mean the same thing. So here's a little synonym diamante that I wrote. Monsters, evil, spooky, howling, shrieking, wailing, ghosts, vampires, goblins, witches, flying, scaring, terrifying, creepy, crawly creatures. So you see, monsters and creatures are synonyms. They're words that mean basically the same thing. Evil and spooky are adjectives that describe those nouns as are creepy and crawly. Um, howling, shrieking, wailing, flying, scaring, terrifying. These are all verbs. These are action words that describe the actions of these monsters, these creatures. And then for the very, the, for the center line, we had four more nouns, remember? And the things that I chose were specific types of monsters. So ghosts, vampires, goblins, witches. Those are different types of monsters. And lastly, you'll notice that my diamante has that very nice little diamond shape just like they should. Now let's take a look at an example antonym diamante. So I decided to write about cats and dogs. Now I know that cats are not the opposite of dogs exactly, but that's okay. For the purpose of our diamante, we're gonna treat them as though they are like opposite kinds of pets you might have. Okay, so to start, I wrote my antonyms at the beginning and the end, on the first line and the seventh line. And then I started working on some adjectives. Cats are, they're gentle and they're sleepy. So those are a couple of words that describe cats. Now I need some words that describe the actions of cats. Purring, meowing, scratching. So those are some things that cats do. Now for our fourth line, remember, we need four nouns. But there's a trick to the antonym diamante. You want to have your first two nouns refer to the first, uh, I'm sorry, your, yeah, your first two nouns refer to the first line, but your last two nouns refer to the last line. So like this, whiskers, fur, collar, leash. Now whiskers and fur could refer to both cats and dogs, but I wrote those to refer to cats. And then collar and leash, well, collar could refer to cats, but you don't usually put cats on a leash. So that definitely falls into the dog category. So now let's get into some of the verbs, some of the action words, the actions that dogs take. Barking, licking, digging. And now I just need two adjectives to complete my antonym diamante. Slobbery, playful, dog. And that's an antonym diamante. Now, now that you've seen what a diamante looks like, let's go through the process of creating an antonym diamante. So to get started, the uh, first thing you need to do is pick a topic, a subject. What do you want to write about? I usually recommend that one of the easiest things in the world to write poems about is write about something you really like. So if you really like video games, you know, write about your favorite video game. If you really like sports, write about your favorite sport. If you really like uh, food, write about your favorite food, something like that. But you could also write about, you know, things that you don't like, something that happens to you, places you go, things you see around you, you know, just anything but favorite things is a good place to start. Once you've done that, then you need to brainstorm some words that go with your subject, okay? So, uh, and, and for diamantes specifically, you wanna think of as many descriptive words as you can. You wanna think of as many action words as you can. You even want to think of some nouns that, um, 
are uh, maybe specific types of the things that you're writing about, right? So if your first line was sports, then maybe some of your nouns for the middle line might be soccer, baseball, football, basketball, right? Something like that. Ah, and then uh, I recommend you start your Diamante by writing your first line and your last line. You can do them both at the same time, that's okay. All right, so what's this about brainstorming? Well, brainstorming really just means that you uh, grab a piece of paper and write down as many words as you can think of that have something to do with your subject, your topic, the thing that you're writing about. And you can, you can uh, write down as many as you want and even try to think of more than you're going to need. And that way, as you start writing your poem, you can pick out just the ones that, uh, that really say what it is that you want your poem to say. All right, so here's an example. I said, you know what? Let's write an antonym, Diamante, about the sun and the moon. Okay, so sun is going to be our first line and moon is going to be our last line. So we need to brainstorm some ideas of things that we can think of, um, uh, actions that the sun takes, uh, words that describe the sun, and so on and so forth. So here's some that I thought of. I thought, well, the sun is hot. Uh, it's yellow, it's uh, fiery, light, blinding, exploding. Uh, oh, it comes out only really in the daytime. It's a long ways away and so on and so forth. Well, for the moon, I thought of these words. It's cold. Uh, it's That's uh, the opposite of hot, right? It's, uh, it's not yellow, it's silver. It comes out at night. Um, it just kind of hangs there. It is still, it orbits the earth, it shines. It has a crescent shape some of the time. You know, all of these are just brainstorm ideas. So then we take it and we put it together into a new Diamante poem. We write our first line, we write our last line, sun, moon. And let's put some of our brainstormed words in here. Sun, fiery, yellow, burning, blinding, exploding, flame, light, night crescent did you notice that little transition there where i went from talking about the sun to talking about the moon yeah shining orbiting reflecting cold silver moon and that's all it takes to write a diamante of your own so some things to remember as you get started diamantes can be about anything but usually uh, it's, it's best if you write them about a thing, right? So remember, nouns can be a person, place, or thing. Easiest to write them about a thing. Um, they're seven lines long. The word counts are one, two, three, four, three, two, one on those seven lines. Uh, we go noun, one noun, two adjectives, three verbs, four nouns, three verbs, two adjectives, and one noun. And, uh, oh, I almost forgot to tell you, when you write your diamante, try to center it on the page. So instead of writing all your words down the left-hand side of the page, like you might with, say, an acrostic poem, you want to try and write them down the center of the page so that you get that nice diamond shape. And uh, most importantly, See if you can have fun doing it. All right, so now it is your turn to take what you learned here and your own ideas and create some Diamante poems of your own. I'll see you next time.